Hello, you lucky, lucky viewers, and welcome back to Adaptation, the ultimate vlog for film adaptations and the original material they're based on. I'm Jessica Dunn, and you may be asking yourself, why are you calling us lucky? Well, I'll tell you. Reason number one you're lucky? I'm your host for this vlog this week. You're welcome. And reason number two, we've come to another Dreamcast, where we get a little bit hypothetical about some of our favorite books that have yet to be adapted. Now, the Dreamcast that I'll be doing this week is a little bit different from the ones that we've done in the past, mainly because I didn't actually choose the book. And no, I'm not stealing someone else's book like some people like at Vention. The selection by Kira Cast was actually listed in our fan edition of Adaptations We Wish Existed. That's right, you chose the book this time. Or at least one of you did. And I jumped right on this one for the Dreamcast, not only because I've read the book, well, I've read the entire series, but also because an adaptation for the selection might not be hypothetical for much longer. Basically, we had to get our choices out there before the actual casting is announced. And let's get started because time is of the essence. They could be posting it right now. Okay, probably not, but why wait? So, first things first is casting the main character of the selection, America Singer. America is described as having fiery red hair and ice blue eyes, and she kind of has the personality to match. The hair, not, not the eyes. She's got a temper. So to play America, I've chosen Holland Roden, who plays Lydia Martin on Teen Wolf. Now, let it be known that I have actually never watched Teen Wolf, and I have never seen Holland act. However, I have seen a boatload of gifts online. I like her spunk, she gets a good reception from viewers, and I am making the assumption that she's actually going to be a good actress to play America. Appearance-wise, she fits the part, and those who watch Teen Wolf seem to like her. The next character to cast is Aspen Leaker, America's childhood sweetheart. He has dark hair and is more or less described as the ruggedly handsome love interest. Get ready for the smolder. And with this in mind, enter Douglas Booth. Dark hair? Check. Rugged? Check. Handsome? He'll do. Then of course there is the other love interest, Max and Shreve, aka the prince, aka the all-important bachelor in this competition. Maxon is described as having blonde hair, and is pretty much the epitome of the golden boy. Now, I was considering casting Tom Felton for this role, but Jen had a couple words to say about that. Namely, are you crazy? No! So instead, I went with Bradley James. He has played royalty before to excellent success as King Arthur in BBC's Merlin, and I don't think I'm the only one who's itching to see that jaw again. <sighs> Moving from The Bachelor to some of the other bachelorettes, first off, there's Marley Thames, who becomes America's closest friend in the competition. Marley is blonde and bubbly, and to fit with this whole B alliteration I've got going, I've decided to cast Britt Robertson for this role. Look at her smile and tell me you don't just want to grin right back at her. I thought so. Now keep those smiles handy even through our next character casting, Celeste Newsom, who tends to test those smiles to the limit. She's the classic mean girl, high society, spoiled, and manipulative. And who better to play Celeste than Nina Dobrev? Sure, she looks pleasant enough, but I bet that she could flip the switch really well. Show the snooty, catty side of her, too. I mean, where else would the drama come from? How about from Maxon's father, His Royal Highness King Clarkson Shreve? After all, what would the story be without the disapproving father figure? And if there's one actor who knows how to play that well, it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan. If there are any Supernatural fans out there, then you will definitely recognize this face as the actor who plays John Winchester, arguably one of the most flawed father figures ever. So yeah, I admit it, I am typecasting. Deal with it! And then finally, presenting the other half of the royal parental unit in this film, we have Queen Amberly Shreve, who was the previous selection winner. As a result, she's a lot more down-to-earth and, yes, likable than her husband. And who better to play the queen than Robin Wright, who played the original Princess Bride in everyone's favorite classic film. My only stipulation for this casting. 
The king has to use the endearment, my buttercup, at least once in this adaptation. I insist on it. And next on the list, oh, wait, nope, that's it, at least for now. But as always, I do encourage you to comment below on what you think about my casting choices, make suggestions for your own, we welcome it all. Don't forget our other social media sites, not to mention our iTunes podcast, all of which are linked in the description. Subscribe below to be notified about our next vlog next Saturday, and until then, will you accept the rose to my heart? Yeah.